Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church, Normandy. It is August the 21st, 2022. We are going to start with 724 on Jordan's Stormy Banks I Stand. I invite you to stand. We're going to sing. to the Lord, for God is good. God's God's steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God's, God's steadfast, steadfast love endures forever. Let those who are wise give heed to these things. God's, God's steadfast love endures forever. For our hymn of praise this morning, we're going to sing, Open My Eyes That I May See. Sunday service, the 11th Sunday after 
the day of Pentecost in our Christian calendar. Uh, we have some one birthday for this week, and that's Renita Schroeder. She didn't make it today, but we do have an anniversary from two that are here that everybody knows, and that's Reverend Mark and Nancy McClanahan. So, as is our tradition, please rise while we sing happy anniversary. Two anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. And many more. You're welcome. Uh, joys, of course, we always have is a joy, our church and our church family. Uh, just for announcements, uh, there will be an administrative council meeting today, immediately after church. And uh, the annual West District hymn sing will be today from 6 until 7 p.m. at Christ Church in College Station. On Monday, September the 5th, uh, this church here office will be closed or Labor Day. I always thought people ought to work on Labor Day. It's Labor Day. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Now on September the 11th, uh, there will be a finance and a SPR meeting after church. Are there any other announcements we need to remember? Sydney. Anything to announce, and then we'll do joys and concerns. You got a. No, he's got a joy. He's got well, let's do a joy. Here, you be first. Oh, that's a, that's a lot of good. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. No. It's a joy to me not to have to go back to school anymore. <laughs> <laughs> After all those years. How about that, Sydney and, and Jill? Who else we have in here? Yeah, it's a joy that we're all retired now, and y'all can have it. Uh, we did our deal. But let's do pray for those uh, teachers. It's, it's been a tough couple of years uh, with the COVID and the pandemic and, and all the things that are going on. It's, it's, it's really hard to be a teacher right now. So please keep those people in your prayers. Any other joys we have? Marsha. Uh, it's a joy to be back. It sure is. Good. Good to see you. Breakfast of champions, I always go. He is now on a diet. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to thank everyone, and it's wonderful to be back after my surgery. I'm about six weeks in there, I guess, still in physical therapy, but at least I can drive now. So. Before, before we do concerns, uh, I have a little short thing I want to talk about. Uh, most of you know that for some time, uh, we had our covenant groups, and we studied this book called The Story uh, that you could purchase for $5, and still can. I noticed there's some back there. And so if you missed that, uh, you missed a great opportunity. And we're about to start another one, and it's called uh, uh, Believe. And it's basically the same kind of concept. And I'd like to encourage all of you, and this book's also for sale for $5. I saw a bunch of them back there, Mark, so, you know. There's plenty of them to go around. Uh, we, uh, I believe, have two covenant groups meeting now on a regular basis. I'm a member of the one that meets on Tuesday mornings at 7.30 at, at the, uh, the place here in town. And I got to tell you, we have it really, it's really enjoyable. Uh, I have never been one of those people who want to go to a Bible study and hear somebody read some scripture out of the Bible and, you know, out of date. just, anyway. But this is a lot more fun. I, we, this is, we get to enjoy each other's company. Uh, we've got to know each other much better. And so I would encourage you, and Mark has time, I think, for two more. He could squeeze in. Or you can join one of ours. 
So if you if you want to join the one that meets at the place on Tuesday morning, uh, if you can pass the, the application process, we'll probably let you <laughs> come in. And uh, no, anybody, just please come. Uh, it's a lot of fun. You learn a lot. Uh, we we talk it over. It's not just you know one lecture type thing. It's it's a discussion kind of thing. And we've I, I personally have learned a lot and gained a lot from it. And so uh, I'd encourage you to do that. Uh, I'm sure Mark will be preaching based on the Belief book. Yes, we'll start September 11th with chapter one, and we will go through the book just like we went through the other book, the story last year. Um, I would mention that the Sunday school that meets here also goes through the study. There's about a 10, 15 minute DVD lesson that you get some instruction and then you get to branch off from that to uh, talk more in depth about the chapter. This book is put together by the same people. It is, um, the chapters primarily contain scriptures from the NIV. And, and then there are, there are some narration type sections, but it's easy to identify what's narration because the narration's in italic and the uh, scriptures are not. And this one, uh, this book is more about how you, you live. Um, the, the first one was about the, the Bible and the story of the Bible. This book, uh, the first section is about what you believe, the second section is about what you do, then the third section is about what does, um, you know, who am I becoming, I think is the third section. So don't miss the opportunity. I, I promise you, uh, nobody gets hurt, and you know, it's a lot of fun. And you learn a lot. I mean, we, I heard a new word the other day. What was it? Herodites or something? And who, who was the Herodites? You know what? So Mark, we test Mark pretty good. He said, what, what does this mean, Mark? You know, a standard question, I mean, a standard answer when you're a teacher and a kid asks you a question, you say, you know, I'll look that up and give you an answer tomorrow. <laughs> and so sometimes we have to do that. Anyway, uh, any other announcements or Joyce, Sydney? So really, like Sheila said, your options, we have two that are meeting now, one on Tuesday, one on Thursday. Or if you want to start another one, and there's time in Mark's schedule to create at least two more covenant groups. And so if you want to start your own, that's that's another option, or you can join uh, the ones that are already meeting. Okay, any uh, pr uh, concerns? We have... Uh, I do. I have a joy. A joy. That's yeah. good. That's better. The results of my last surgery show that I had no cancer. Well, amen. All right. We have uh, on our list, we have Ann, uh, Amy Rucker, uh, Sarah Lundy, which we just got a great report on, uh, Michael Bacon, Dale Richardson, the people in the Ukraine, uh, Jack Moe and Noe Powell, and just found out today that Marcus Watson just had surgery. So need to pray for those. And, of course, on your bulletin, you have those on the long-term list and on the home mail list. Do we have any others? Yes, yes ma'am. So I have three. Um, so my brother is going through some testing. His name's Kenny Thompson. He's visited here a few times. Um, but they're doing some testing to determine if he has lymphoma. My law partner, Edna Elizondo, was diagnosed with breast cancer. She is a widow and has two teenage kids. So they're, they're scared right now and anxious. And then my dad has COVID currently. Mm. Mm. I lost a good friend last week to COVID. It just, it seemed like it's, it just won't go away. Sarah? Yes. Uh, 
Yeah, we absolutely. Any others? Okay. Uh, Pastor Mark, you lead us in prayer. Let's bow for prayer. Oh God, we come to you and we confess our sin before you, asking you to open us to the new life that Christ offers to all. Help us, Lord God, to remember those who are hurting and in harm and need your special touch. We pray, God, for healing. We pray, God, that you would bring the peace that only you can give. Help us, Lord God, to be people of love. May we love you in a manner that pleases you, but may we also love others the way that you would want us to. We pray for those right now who are living without you, and we pray that our witness in the ministry that we do would somehow help others come to know you and the great love you have for all. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name as we join the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The chimes of time ring out the news of another day of sea. Someone slipped and fell. Was that someone new? You may have long or added strength or courage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
let's join now. Let's join now in our prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit. And as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The reading this week is from Mark, chapter 4, verses 21 through 25. He said to them, Is a lamp brought in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed, and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And he said to them, Pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get, and still more will be given to you. For to those who have, more will be given. And from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. By the congregation to stand as we say our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sat at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory to the Father.
So I read something that, that uh, I, w- I wondered about a little bit, and it, and it had to do with, uh, you know how archaeologists, they come behind and they look through uh, cultures to find out what happened in the culture, what was going on, and uh, th- this writer was suggesting, what in the world are archaeologists going to think when they go through our stuff, and if any of us have happened to written down any of the tenets of Murphy's Law? What might they think? And so, you know, Murphy's Law, um, some future generation may look and, and they'll, they'll see something like, if anything can go wrong, it will. If nothing can go wrong, it will anyway. <laughs> or they might see something, nothing is as easy as it looks. Or this one, everything takes longer than you think. And here's one I think we all can relate to. The other line always moves faster. (laughs) The probability of a peanut butter sandwich falling on the carpet face side up is directly proportional to the cost of the carpet. The light at the end of the tunnel is probably an oncoming train. That's for all the tunnels around here. I was thinking about that. It's like, I don't worry about that around here so much. Uh... So Murphy was an optimist. That's the last one. So one thing happened to me this week is I was looking at the passage for today. I was looking, and there in the middle of the passage, it says, Let anyone with ears to hear listen. That's verse 23. And then verse 24. And he said to them, Pay attention to what you hear. Bringing the whole notion of listening into play as as the parables are taught that we should be listening, we should be paying attention to what Jesus had to say. And and I got to thinking, well, was there anything about listening last week that maybe I just didn't pay attention to? And so I went back to last week's text, and I looked, and there in Mark chapter 4, we read last week Mark 4, verses 3 through 9. So verse 23, I'm all confused. (laughs) <laughs> All right, go, go with the next slide there, Melody. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. That's from today's text, verse 24. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. And so then, then, then I, I went and I looked at last week's text. And last week's text was, was Mark 4, 3 to verse 9. And verse 3 said this, listen, a sower went out to sow. And then verse 9 said this, and he said, to anyone with ears to hear, listen. So the, the text that we read last week, the very first word in the text was listen. The very last word in the text was also listen. And, and it got me to thinking a little bit about the parables and about how these parables, they have something for us if only we can get ourselves in a place where we can hear, where we can perceive, where we can understand. I think the parables often over the time, as, as, I, as I come to the parables, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago, now, and I expect in five years and in 10 years when I, when I revisit the parables, there's always maybe something a little different that, that is there for me to, to gain and understand. But it's important for us to, as best we can, open our hearts, open our minds to what God has for us in the uh, the parable. So last week, the the first verse started with listen. The last verse we read ended with listen. Did Pastor Mark say anything about listening last week? No, of course not. (laughs) Why would I do that? So I'll just say it this week. Let's make sure we listen. As we're in these parables. So today we start with uh, verse 21 in Mark chapter 4. He said to them, Is a lamp brought in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not on the lampstand? And and, uh, there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed or is anything secret except to come to light. And then here's verse 23. Let anyone with ears hear, listen. This whole notion of bringing in the lamp to put it under something, I'm trying to figure this out. I mean, because if you're going to need a lamp, if you're going to have a lamp, 
You usually put it up high so you can see. I know, I know I'm excited about my cell phone because my cell phone has a flashlight. And so just, and I almost always have it in my pocket. And so anywhere I am, I have a flashlight that I can pull out and I can put light on something that I want to see. One of my, probably one of the most used features of my cell phone is, is the flashlight because it is so helpful. And I know around here, you guys probably don't lose your power as much as I do, but sometimes we lose our power around here. And I bet all of us know where there's a flashlight, where there's an oil lamp. I know at our house, we have some of those uh, glow sticks where you break them and they light up. We've got some of those. We like to play with those when the lights go out. You know, when I'm thinking about light, I'm reminded of the Christmas Eve services we have here. When at the very end of the service, we, we turn all the lights down and off. And then we've passed out candles, and then we light a candle, and then we start passing that candle around, the light around, to where, to where towards the end, everybody's got a lit candle, and usually towards the end, we hold them up. And how moving that service always is to me, is we're holding the lights at Christmas Eve, and as, as, as hopefully we're thinking about how we are the ones that God has put charged with taking the light of Jesus into the world. The, uh, and, and I think this parable has to do with that, with, with us sharing the light into the world. I think the parable has to do with sometimes we do take that light and we hide it and we don't show it to others. Um, you know, we want to be able to see, we want to be able to, to know what it is that God wants us to do. I read, I read about three ladies that went to the restaurant, and all three pulled out their glasses to read the menu. And the first lady said, I really only need mine for close reading. The second one said, I only wear mine when the light is poor. And then the third one said, I rarely wear mine except when I want to see. You know? <laughs> You know, as I was reflecting on the parable, I was thinking, you know, if, if our task is to be light, if our task is to show the light of Christ, when is it that we would want to hide that light? Why would we ever want to hide the light? And it got, I got to thinking, you know, if I'm trying to live a holy life, and I have like two, basically you have two parts of my life. I have the holy part of my life, I have the unholy part of my life. You know, and I don't want those two parts to ever meet. And so when I'm in the holy part of my life, I have my light, I hold it up, I shine. But if I've got a part of my life, if I'm trying to live those two lives, when I try to live the unholy part, well, that's when I would take that light and try to hide it. Because I wouldn't necessarily want all of my unholy friends to know. Sometimes we get to the place where we're trying to live two different lives. You know, we live one way on Sunday. And we live another way the rest of the week. And, and I can't help but wonder, maybe when we're living the other way, maybe that's when we're taking that light and we're trying to find a bushel or a bed or Certainly not a lampstand. Because, because when we're wanting that light to be known, we're going to hold it up. We're going to put it as high as we can. So that everyone can be drawn to it. And I think that's what God wants most of all. Is for us and our witness to shine the light of Christ. So that everyone can see and know the relationship that's made possible, that Christ makes possible because of his death and his resurrection. You know, in John 8, 12, uh, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus says he's the light of the world. And hopefully as we lead our lives, we will help to draw people to Jesus. The second part of this passage deals with generosity. Um, Jesus, uh, and it goes to verse 24. I'm just going to read verses 24 and 25. And he said to them, 
Pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get. And still more will be given you. For those who have, more will be given. And those who have nothing, even what they have, will be taken away. We, this, I, I struggle with, with those verses. The, that type of a verse appears several times in Scripture, where those who have, more will be given. Those who don't have, even what they have, will be taken away. And I think it speaks to folks who choose to be generous on one hand, and folks who choose not to be generous on the other hand. I think a lot of times we, we have in our head, there's a couple of ideas. One of them is the idea of scarcity, where there's only a little bit to be had, and I better hold on to what I have because there's not any more to be had. There's just a little bit, and when it's all gone, it's all gone. And then the other, the other folks or other, other idea is this idea of abundance, that there, there's always an ever-growing amount available. And, and that ties in somewhat to the parable we looked at last week, the parable of the sower, the seed that falls on the good soil, and how at harvest time that you will reap 30, 60, even 100-fold. From, from the harvest. And I, and I think that speaks to a philosophy, an idea of abundance. And, and I think that folks that choose to be generous are folks who, who live in the abundance. And they've come to realize that they really can't give too much. That what they give always comes back in some form or another. And, and generosity is not like a bank account. It's not like you deposit so much, you're going to be able to get that much back. But what I have discovered is any time in my faith journey, I choose to give a little bit more. Invariably, a little bit more comes back to me. And it's not something that's a one-for-one. One. It, it can be maybe something else. And, it, and, and a lot of times, it, it, it doesn't. it's not something that you can necessarily hold a strict accounting to. But I have discovered in my faith journey that God always blesses generosity. And that, I think, is what our passage is speaking to today. There's a story in Genesis 13 about a lot in Abram. And Lot and Abram, uh, they, they leave and they travel together. And at one point, they both have large herds and they both have vast amounts of wealth. And it's getting to a point that they can no longer coexist. And so Lot and Abram, they go up and they're on, a, they're on like a mountain and there's a divide. And, and they're looking over at the, the lush plains of Jordan and they're looking over. And so it's not quite as lush, but still a large area of land. And they choose which way they're going to go. And Abram says, well... It looks like we're not going to be able to share the same grazing land, so let's, you choose which one you want. And I can remember as a boy learning this in Sunday school, how they had pictures, and, and that plain of Jordan was lush and green, and it looked just beautiful, and how, how the, the land that, that Abram was, the other side, looked like it was almost a desert. And, and, and Lot was given the choice to choose. You see, Abram there is practicing generosity. He's practicing generosity. And Lot made what is likely the obvious choice. He chose the green plain towards the Jordan. And, and Abram went the other way. And, and, and as Abram goes the other way, God again pronounces God's blessing on Abram. That Abram's people are going to be a great nation that will outnumber the the stars and the sand. And once again, Abram receives that blessing from God. And as Lot travels down into the plain of the Jordan, Lot is traveling closer and closer to a city called Sodom. And, and he winds up getting enveloped into the evil that's there. And, and there, there are plenty of examples in scriptures where where the, the characters in Scripture will be generous, and God offers a blessing. And then there's other instances where characters are, or where the Bible characters are not generous, and they know. You know, we, we often will look at situations and we will think, oh, it's, it's bad, and it's getting worse. You notice that there's that, that great prophet that sometimes we all listen to, Chicken Little. 
And Chicken Little, if you listen to, to Chicken Little, we know that the sky is falling and it's only going to get worse. And we, we get a choice. We can choose. Well, am I going to pay attention to, to the fear? Am I going to pay attention to the, the prophet Chicken Little? Or am I going to search out ways that I can be generous with what God has given to me? There's a verse in Ephesians 3, verse 20. Uh, now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. God is able to accomplish more than we can ask or imagine. Another time, another sort of circumstance, I think that gets us into more of a scarcity mindset or gets us into a situation where we're not perhaps thinking in the best way that we should for our faith is when we start to compare ourselves with others. When we start to look on the other side of the fence or we start to think, well, so-and-so has something, why don't I have something? And we get to that place where I should have as much as so-and-so or certainly I'm smarter than so-and-so. And we get into this comparison that leads us into a place where we're no longer paying attention to God. 2 Corinthians 10, 12 says this, it says, we, for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. When we, when we look at, at, at who we are and what we are, we should consider ourselves not in comparison with others, but just in comparison with the person we, we know and believe that God wants us to be. And, and as, as we've said, you know, what we, we know that most of all, God wants us to love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And God wants us to love everybody, to love our neighbor as ourselves. God wants us to love folks who are bright, folks who are dim, and try not to look at anybody, but folks who the light has just gone out. Good, you guys didn't look around. Everybody's looking at me. I'm not sure that's a good one. <laughs> First John 4, 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. Christ makes possible our relationship with God. Christ makes it possible for us to choose to be generous. And I hope that we will make that choice to be people who are generous. And one way to do that is to try to give a little bit more. You know, maybe, maybe we just tip a little bit more. Maybe we put a little bit more in our offering plate. Maybe we find a, a nonprofit that we have never given to before and give them something. And it wouldn't have to be a lot. Nonprofits receive uh, um, donations from, from, from a dollar up. And uh, they, those go to, go to help the cause, whether it's small, whether it's a lot. So choose to be generous and maybe find a way to give a little more. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your love and for your grace. We thank you for the opportunity to have a relationship with you and be a part of Christ's holy church. Help us to be known as God's people, people of love, people who are generous. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the one of the, the ministries our church has that I don't know that everyone's aware of is every week we send out, we send out a home touch letter to, to folks who are homebound. And sometimes some of these go to some of our folks who have moved away from us who are homebound. And uh, there's, a, there's a little writing on the front and then there's some uh, games on the back. There's also uh, scripture readings on the back. And uh, the one this week uh, happens to, to mention that back in 1988, President Ronald Reagan, um, in a proclamation, marked August 21st 
as the day seniors will be celebrated. So if you haven't scheduled a party for today, most of us, <laughs> most of us could. So there you go. But we send these out every week, and these are possible because you are faithful when you give to our church. Our rail offering for this month is going to the share shop. That's the wicker baskets here on the rail. And then our plates, which are here on the rail, and there's one in the back, one in the office. Those go to, uh, to the general fund of our church. I would invite the congregation to stand, and let's sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here. sing 2160 into my heart. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.